Jam! Hello again and welcome to the Mana Pool. This is episode 462 of the Mana Pool. Yay! I was gonna, here on, no wait, here on the manapool.com, I guess. <laughs> I was getting my Monday Night Magic intro stuck in my brain. This is not Monday Night Magic. This is the Mana Pool! So I hear. I'm Homestar and this is a website. <laughs> So, yes, 462 of the Mana Pool. I am Chewy, the lead dork of the Mana Pool here on episode 462. <laughs> I'm Brian. I'm the lead ramble, ramble, rambler, and tangent master. And, you know, uh, I'm my own woman, so I don't have to wait for anybody. I mean, what? I mean, what? I'm Mike, I'm the rules guy and the game lore guy here on episode 462 and most of the ones preceding it and hopefully most of the ones proceeding it. Is is that the right word? Isn't it? I don't know, is it? And I'm not Dirk. I'm not the self-proclaimed greenest man alive. But I can still interrupt him as though he was. Well played, sir. (laughs) I was going to say, if I'm the moral compass of the group, you're all in deep, deep trouble. (laughs) Yeah, whatever the opposite of a compass is. That would be so is he a the moral ruler. sextant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny word. It is. So yeah, because so Dirk isn't here because Dirk is uh on a cruise. He's on a boat and but not the same boat that Clues uh-uh. is on. That'd be funny. He's not on the Clues cruise. He's not they on the cruise. They might have to cruise. use a sextant while they're on the boat. I mean, that is a thing that that <laughs> yeah. people used to do. I Can I'm, I be I'm a guessing Bob someone sextant? still does. They That's might still. Magic, it is. <laughs> oh my god. Hi. <laughs> yeah, you guys know Chris, right? He writes for Star City. He's a uh, reformed podcast whore. Although this is two in a week now. Can you handle it? I'm starting to get the bug again. Oh yeah, god. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We're, we're gonna ban you from the rest. <laughs> He's gonna relapse. <laughs> He's gonna start his own podcast. What, what would it be called? Uh, this time, I have a guy's name Chris. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> Churchcast Northeast. It's just me with five different accents. <laughs> I was super, burgers while you're at it. I was super excited when Chewie told me we were going to be talking about what we're going to be talking about. And, you know, I thought, this is going to be great. We can talk about Alex Bertoncini. We can talk about Jared Betcher. It's going to be it's going to be so much fun. I'm really excited. Mike Long. Yeah, good old Mike Long. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. That is no? the wrong. That's the wrong one. Oh dear. Yeah. Mm. This so, might be awkward. just a little bit. Uh, so yes, because, dear listeners, at the, uh, in the middle of last week, what was it? It was Wednesday? Wednesday night? It was Wednesday yeah. night, I think. So in the middle of last week, there was an announcement made that was an addendum to the ban and restricted list update the previous week. Em- emphasis on dumb. <laughs> oh. Where they decided, out of sequence, completely out of the blue, to ban Felidar Guardian from Standard. Meow. And th- <laughs> you know, I expected that from Chris, but the fact that that was Brian's voice really threw me off. <laughs> but he beat uh, me to it. So that <laughs> I so, can speak with Chris's accent to make it seem like it was him, but no, you can't. I'm terrible with accents. <laughs> I'm afraid if I started trying to speak in Chris's accent, I would offend people north and south and east and west of the border. <laughs> so to avoid doing that, I'm just going to say nothing. <laughs> also, if Brian tries to use an accent, he will forget what his normal voice sounds like, and it'll just be it'll just be busted. The rest of the episode, it'll be Irish, Scottish, uh, Russian, Russian, all mixed together in a blender. It would be bad. S- sassy Southern black woman. Now that's what he usually sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's fast. So since we have, Girl. depending on uh, just how cynical you are, this is either the first addendum to a ban and restricted list update, or this is the second ever emergency ban. Something like a cross between those two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the two extremes for how to do this. I thought it would be really neat to look at the history of the Banhammer in Magic Total. You sure we're not talking about Mike Long? I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Not, not the kind of Banhammer that sees people DQ'd and kicked out and 
not allowed to play anymore, but the kind of Banhammer that sees people, uh, swear and, uh, waste money on uh, buying cards and things like that. And cheer. And, and what? And, and cheer. cheer. Sometimes you oh, cheer. That is true. Like lots of people <laughs> did when the kitty was banned. Yep. Yeah. Or, or when Stone, uh, Stone Jace, um, was banned. <laughs> Callblade. So, Stone yeah. Jace. Ba- basically when Callblade was banned, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It was kind of, I thought it was kind of, I thought it was kind of funny, um, with Felidar Guardian. You know, on Monday, there's like, they looked at standards, just, yeah, yeah, it's not so bad. And a lot and of people after. were like, and, and then a couple of days of MTGO data came in, and it was like, oh, it was bad. Oh, it was oh god. Bad. I, oh I, my god. I, I think to give it some context, yeah, when they, when they announced the addendum, they said, here's the reason we're doing this, and it's that for the first time ever, ever, <laughs> We actually released a set online before it was released in paper, which is a fairly momentous occasion to begin with. You know, that's uh, that that's something yeah. that's never happened before. And and a sick is exactly what the format apparently was because they from the daily cues or whatever they found that um, Philidar Go- uh, Sovereign was showing up in what percentage of decks of winning decks was zero. It- Forty percent. Yeah, forty. Felidar Guardian was showing up in forty percent. Felidar Sovereign was in zero. Was in zero. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. He was even just reprinted in Battle for Zendikar, wasn't he? Yeah. But Felidar has to be called by his colloquial name, which is Win Cat. But Felidar Ga- uh, Guardian was in forty percent. That is a huge number. And at that point, R and D had two choices: either go, well, we already made our decision. And this is the schedule we have set for ourselves. And the uh, player, <laughs> players will, this is what and, pl- <laughs> and players will start. <laughs> players will start to basically autocorrect. You'll start to see more reactive spells to deal with the combos. Uh, or we go ahead and just you know bite the bullet right now. Go ahead and and ban it. Say you know we oops we goofed. I think at one point. In the article, he even said combos like Sahili and the cat should not exist in the first place. He he said those should not come out of R and D, which well, was a they, pretty bold statement. They admitted months ago that they missed that interaction mm-hmm. completely when the Philidar Guardian was printed. Did they? Okay, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, but so I think he's right. Like, I this shouldn't it, exist. I just think it's interesting because. We do. This is not exactly the first time we've ever had an infinite combo, even in standard. You know, so I just thought for them to say that shouldn't happen. I was like, wow, that's a that's a big statement. Right. But so the, go the ahead. Key, the key caveat is that they said it shouldn't happen in standard. Modern is far better equipped to handle this. Uh, well, I I just remember the days of um, good old Splinter Twin combo right. in standard, which as I think we talked about when Philidar Gu- uh, Guardian was previewed. Felt much worse than this. Yeah, that was the, also a mistake. <laughs> but the standards, if you'll forgive the pun, for standard have changed since then. So, yeah. but no, they haven't. They're still the same. They admitted when they printed Deceiver Exile that they missed the combo with Splinter Twin. Uh, <sighs> and hey, the dummies. problem with that combo is that half of it was at instant speed. So yes, yeah, you didn't have a yeah. turn to prepare for it. At least um, this one, you know, you can kind of see coming. So. They are fine with infinite combos in standard as long as they take multiple cards or ridiculous amounts of mana. Mm-hmm. And I think if Sahili Rai had been in, say, Dragons of Tarkia and had now rotated, that nobody would care. Because Felidar Guardian on its own doesn't actually break anything except... It's, it it's a neat card, and yeah. it's very Johnny, but without cra- without the crazy cat lady, it doesn't go, whoa, 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 and, you know... Combo unlocked. Thank yeah. you for playing. Yeah. Except screw you, but you know, whatever. Having yeah. said that, it is far from the least powerful card to ever get banned. That's true. That's true. <laughs> true. Um, now. So I think, so I think that's one of the reasons that, um, reactions are, are mixed. I think more people, I haven't really heard almost anybody say, oh darn, Philidar Sovereign, I loved it so much. I haven't heard a whole lot of that. Uh, most of the negative reaction I've heard is from the timing of this. So, yeah, but it, it is what it is. This is the standard that we have for the next several 
weeks or until they do an addendum <clears throat> again. <laughs> now, I, I think it sets an interesting precedent where they have said, we have done this, so we we can do it again. We don't want to do it again, but we can do it. Go ahead, Chewy. Now, for a much deeper, much deeper discussion about this particular band and its uh, effects, go listen to Monday Night Magic number 558. Which had um, me and Bill and Clues and Chris Lansdale. Can I listen to it on themanapool.com? No. That is too bad. <laughs> but you can hear it on the uh, Manapool YouTube channel. You can also hear this on the Manapool YouTube channel because enough people asked that I decided it would be worth a shot. And enough people listen to it that way to where that'll just be what happens now. So... All of these podcasts will be up on youtube.com slash the manipool for until I decide not to do it anymore, which will probably take a long time. So you know how you record using video capture software? Uh, I know where you're going with this and I'm going to stop you right there. So <laughs> let's get into, I was going to say you should make your own animation for the movie for, for the, for the videos, you know, because you don't have enough other stuff to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But so, so what are we talking about today? Yeah, by, by the way, for anyone that that asks, there will only ever be a still image for these videos because they're not there to be videos. They're there for people that can't or won't access the various audio files. Yeah. So if you're like, why don't you have cards? Put no. <laughs> that takes work. I'll tell you what you can do. You bring it up on YouTube and then in a separate window or on a game system, you bring up your favorite Final Fantasy game. <laughs> no, they don't pay me to do that, but they should. And and or and you know, play as you go along. It's amazing how well that works. It's true. Now, for this episode, we thought it'd be neat to look at the history of bannings and whatnot in Magic History from yeah. the very beginning. Because I know that we've talked about at, pr at various times, we're like, now wait a minute, and we've referenced some of the history, uh, I, and, you know, when they have banned things before, like, last year, was it last year, or earlier this year, when they banned, uh, Emrakul and Smuggler Scott, was that earlier this year? I think that was this year. Uh, I can look it up on this handy thing we've got right here. Yeah, it was in January. We said, we took a look back and said, you know, when's the last time we banned anything in Standard? But we haven't really taken an in-depth look like what we're about to do into bannings as a whole and their history. Right? Right. Right. And we were desperate for something that we could do that we wouldn't feel like we missed Dirk on. Desperate is a strong, yet I feel appropriate word. So well, I was, fun. it was either this or stream some more. So, <laughs> uh, so let us go back. To January 25th, 1994. I was 13. I I was 9, about to turn 10 soon. I'm I was old. born in 19, December of 1981. So you were just 11. No, just 12. 12. Yeah, I just turned 12. Yeah, this was about right? the time somebody no. came up. Me at high no, school. I was just like, 13. Hey, Chris, we just found this cool game. It's like D&D &D with cards. I'm like, that'll never catch on. And you know what? And you were right. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so, the original DCI ban and restricted list is a source of great comedy to today's sensibilities. <laughs> Some of these. Yeah. The, Some of these okay. make sense. Some of these are fine. There's Ancestral Recall. Yeah, the Power Nine are yeah. on the list. Black Lotus, whatever the the, the Moxon, uh, Alley from Cairo. Yeah, wait, no, the, the, just just the, the Power Nine. <laughs> okay, so it's Recall Lotus, the Moxon. Uh, what's what's the other one? Time, time twister. twister, Time Twister, and Time Walk. Time. Yeah, and Time yeah. Vault. Time Vault is not in the Power it's the Nine. The Power Nine point no. five. It yeah. is, yeah. Depending on when in the rulings, it's it's Power Ten. <laughs> I think they yeah, finally made it, was, it fair again. Sometimes it was awesome. Sometimes it was impossible to use. Yeah. But then there are some more interesting ones on here, like, uh, like, okay, Gauntlet of Might. 
Gauntlet of Might is the four mana artifact. Red creatures get plus one, plus one, and your mountains give you an extra red mana. Mm -hmm. And Dingus Egg, which just sounds, you know... So what? Yes. Okay, Funny. Wait, wait. What's what's up with Gauntlet of Might? Is it just because red would have been just too good? There are some of these that I'm sure were banned because um, they went against someone's play style, or they were looked at as just you know too good. So Gauntlet of Might is like a personal anthem effect that didn't really was exist this? in many other forms, and a personal mana flare if you were just playing mono red. Was this before the limit to four of per deck? No. That I do not remember. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure the four of limit was in place at this point. Also, these were only restricted; they weren't banned. Right. This, this, these are restricted. Uh, okay, let's let's run through the rest. Dingus Egg, like Brian said. Brain Geyser. You Brain forgot. Geyser. Ali from Cairo. Uh, Ali from Cairo. Because you might not ever lose the game, you know. Yeah, okay. so that dies to a zap. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Berserk. That one sort of makes sense. Um, Icy Manipulator. Which was a ridiculously overpowered card for a very long time. Yeah, and that was fine. And then, uh, Rook Egg. <laughs> because reasons. I think Rook Egg and Orcish Oriflam are on the list because of the way they were printed. Um, I think so. Oriflam. as written, as written, the text of Rook Egg will make it trigger and give you the token when it goes to the graveyard from anywhere. If you're playing it as written. Yeah. So it's really powerful in that way. And then Orkishora Flam, because, okay, there were a couple of cards that were misprinted in alpha and corrected in beta. Yeah. Orkishora Flam was one of them. It was supposed to cost three in a red, but the alpha printing just cost one in a red, mm -hmm. which is a whole lot better. And the thing was, if you had the alpha version in your deck, you would play the card as written. So Orkishora Flam, I'm, I'm, I think that's the reason Orkishora Flam was restricted. Definitely yeah. the reason Ara Flam was. Uh, Rook Egg, I cannot confirm or deny your belief. Uh, that is the way that it was played back then. Uh, okay. Is that if it, if if you discarded it, you got a free four four. It was completely insane. <laughs> Soul Ring is also on the list because, well, nobody ain't going to argue with that. <laughs> yeah, not really. Yeah, no. I mean, you no. can only play one in uh, EDH. So so, and that's where it's the biggest problem, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Shut up, Chris. Uh, is that uh, time walk time? Okay, that's everything, right? No, Shahrazad was banned, or Shahrazad rather. Okay, well, that's that's the restricted list. Yes. So that's everything, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, anti cards and Shahrazad were banned. Yeah, anti cards. Well, and because Charizard. at this point, they decided that anti wasn't a thing anymore. Yeah. No, they printed a couple more. Expansion oh, yeah, sets right. that had anti cards in them. Ice Age was the last expansion. It was a, an anti card. Homelands oh, was before. What was uh, in Homelands? Was Jeweled Bird Homelands? Temerian Fiends. Yeah, the Fiends. Oh, the yeah. Fiends. Yeah. I was looking at them and think they're ho ho uh, Halloween trick or treaters. Which yes. Okay. So and they they just straight up banned anti cards because they didn't want that to be part of tournament magic. That was meant to be right. a casual magic yes. thing. And Shavrazad yeah. because tournaments got a damn end sometime. <laughs> yeah. Uh there was also the logistics issue. Where do you play the sub game? Under the table. Clearly. Like in that unsaid. But yeah, <laughs> no, but he, Chris has a good point because you have to you have to respect the layout of the game uh that you're leaving. Yeah, that has to remain intact. We have to play a whole nother game somewhere. So, yeah. It was very weird. There, there's lots of problems with Charizard, as awesome as it is. And then it got weird. <laughs> the the use of cards from any of the expansion sets, which at the time was only Arabian Nights, are banned <laughs> unless the referee consents to their use. Which is an odd way to promote your game. You can use stuff from the core sets, and we encourage you to buy cards from the new sets, but you can't use them in tournaments. So It, it says here in parentheses, this would later be changed to allowed unless expressly disallowed by the judge prior to the event. So basically reversed. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, a holdover from a very, very early um, design philosophy you know when they were originally planning on giving arabian nights and the subsequent expansions a different card back 
Yes. So that, so that they'd be easily identifiable and so that people could say, oh, I don't really want to, I just want to play with the base game. I don't want to play with the expansion. And someone would say, oh, okay, fine. As a side note, did you read Mark Rosewater's article on Monday? Uh, anyway. yes. What was it about? What was it about? Well, it was, he's continuing his series of, you know, basically A through Z stories from Amon, Amonkhet. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm referring to? Uh, you're going to have to remind me. There was a part, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up now and not take too long to do it. It's called, the article is called Amonkhet Talking. And he's talking of all cards about Gravedigger. Come on, load, load. I am saying he a grave digger. Uh, he's talking about grave digger specifically because he says, um, in early Tempest design, we were playing around with a mechanic that had a draw trigger similar to, uh, miracles. That is when you drew the card, it would make something happen. We planned to make the backs a different color. So all the players would know when one was about to be drawn. This was before opaque card sleeves were a big thing. Eventually, the logistics of the new mechanic killed it. So I thought that was really interesting that even in Tempest, which is years after what we're talking about right now, they were like, yeah, sure, let's change the card back, which you'd think at that point was kind of like a set thing. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was interesting. Weird. Yep. Just okay. goes to show you, Mark Rosewater has no problem with slaughtering sacred cows. Moo. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be wondering, well, what format is this? Well, there weren't formats at the time. There was magic. <laughs> magic yeah. the gathering. Yes. Yep. Uh, so that was January 25th, the very first ban and restricted list. And February 23rd, less than a month later, they decided to come up with uh, rules and whatnot and cover the Orcish Oriflam misprinting and the way Rook Egg was supposed to work. Yeah. And they were unrestricted because now they're silly. <laughs> Uh, a month later in March 23rd, they restricted more things. Some of which arguably should have been restricted the first time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we've got channel. You know that website that, uh, you find LSV on that limitedresources.com? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Channel hatred. That, that card sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the card limited resources, by the way. It's banned in commander, uh, like channel. Uh, it's terrible, yeah. But the the car uh, the site is named Channel Fireball, and there are probably lots of people who have no idea why it's called that. This thing gets a cool name. It, it is, is a cool name, but it has a history of magic. What's Mike? What is the first word that comes to mind when you hear Channel Fireball? I win. <laughs> That's not a word. That's weird. I I, the first thing I think of is I lose. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first word I think of when I hear that to this day is called is cheese because this was like the definition oh. of cheese. Yeah, I just think in response bolt. To, but <laughs> did that work back then? Yeah, you, yeah, you could respond to fireball with bolt even back then. You just I mean, the game, went, the game went in in a draw, but you know, because yes. of the way that you check life totals at the end of uh, at the end the, of the phase. Yeah, yeah. Better than a loss. So yeah, channel fireball was the way that you would play channel, suck all your life out into a fireball and murder your opponent. Yeah. There you go. Interestingly, they decided to, uh, restrict channel and not fireball. Well, yeah. Cause fireball wasn't the problem. No. Even though it's an incredibly confusing card to read. But I'm surprised they had that lucidity to recognize that <laughs> the channel was the actual problem and not fireball. I, I think also they just didn't want to ban something as I iconic to the idea of wizard slinging spells as fireball. That makes sense. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. I cast fireball. You can say that probably in like a dozen or more games. It has some sort of meaning. I cast channel. Well, okay, that probably, but what, what does it? Like, it doesn't immediately spring to mind it has to do X. But everybody hears Fireball. You can talk to somebody that doesn't know anything about fantasy and say, Fireball, and they go, ah! So... Hadouken! So this is 1994, and they restricted channel. Does that mean it was Cinemax? So next up, we have Copy Artifact. <laughs> so why is you know, we Copy can't Artifact on that? Copy because... Artifact might have been because it was so confusing. Because Copy Effects are already kind of complicated in the early game for a while they didn't work at all um, yeah. and so, copy artifact also stays in enchantment as part of its effect yeah. the 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 
wording on the card is select any artifact in play. This enchantment acts as a duplicate of that artifact. It is affected by cards that affect either enchantments or artifacts. The copy remains even if the original artifact is destroyed. Enchantments on the original artifact are not copied, (laughs) which that's a lot of words. And I don't feel like this is the least intuitive card, but like Mike said, the fact that it, you choose a copy for it. It's an artifact, but it's also an enchantment. I think this and was a power level ban, actually. That's what I, think I was so. thinking, is that for two mana, you could get another, whatever. Sorry. So time vault. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. There, so there's at least a couple reasons we can think of. Can mm-hmm. we agree on that? That I thi- Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll all agree on why the next one was restricted. What, Demonic Tutor? Yeah, El Busto. What's Next. wrong with that card? <laughs> the, fact, the fact that it le- does everything, all the things. If, if these yeah. combos in this early game were not bad enough, but the ability to just go, hey, look, I'm missing this one thing, but yeah, now I, was... I'm not missing it. <laughs> and if you had four copies of Demonic Tutor, then it didn't matter if these other cards were restricted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got Regrowth, which gets something back from the graveyard, and all of these it's, cards, if you use them once, they're bad enough. Uh, it's <laughs> almost like Demonic Tutor for your graveyard instead of your library. So, yep. which me, it's arguably not quite as strong early on, but just late, as bad later in the game. Late game, it's just actually the same and, thing. And late game in some of these might be like turn three. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wheel of Fortune is restricted. Because, damn it, red shouldn't draw seven cards. Or you wouldn't think so. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're restricting uh, Time Twister, then this feels fairly intuitive. <laughs> no, you got to discard the cards. They stay in the graveyard. It's fair. It's what fair, cards? Yeah. What, what cards would they be, Mike? I'm playing red. <laughs> you know, all those, all, those, all those cards. <laughs> Mike, you and your, your self-milling. Come on, man. I mean, the other thing is that Wheel of Fortune made your opponent ditch their hand. That's Lands true. and all. And they've always had a thing about making people do that. Not always. Okay, but wait, not there's always. more. So those are all restricted. They straight up banned Time Vault. Just I nope. guess restricting it wasn't enough. Uh, a prior, a prior to the low, apparently not. So tri- answer to the trivia question, which was the first of the Power 9 to be banned, or the Power 10 to be banned? Well, it, Time Vault was banned before Black Lotus or any of the Moxon. Yeah. And it's only the second non-anti card to be banned. And, you know, I get it because it allow, as bad as the power nine is, there's a lot of continuous potential for abuse with time ball. Most of the others are at least just one hit wonders. Well, Moxton you can use over and over again, but Mm. yeah. And then I see manipulators unrestricted because they realize, you know, it's really, really good, but it does cost four. And it's not nearly as bad as some of these other things. Yeah, it was, it's still at this point in the game, insanely powerful, but. Oh yeah. It's only insanely powerful up to a point. Right. Like it's not complete. What is it you said about Demonic Tutor? Busto? It's not Busto. El Busto. <laughs> yeah, it's just stupid good. So there we go. Moving on to May. We don't have a date. It just says May. By the way, well, the think, link to the the timeline of these is are, are, is in the show notes if you'd like to follow along. So just by looking at this, this would imagine this would be when every, uh, Antiquities came out, I guess. I mean, I guess because it's got Feldens Cane and and Candelabra. Uh, yeah. Let me Antiquities release date. Uh, March 1994, which means it wouldn't have been tournament legal until April. Hmm. So, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Is that how that worked back then? I can't remember now. Well, yeah. it probably would have been released near the end of March, so. Oh, duh. Copy, oh no, Copy Artifact wasn't in Antiquities. Should yeah, no. Okay, so, yeah, as you can tell, Candelabra of Taunos, huh. Felden's Cane, right? Uh, Ivory Tower... And Library of Alexandria were restricted. It's just like two of these things are not like the other two. (laughs) Yeah, but actually, are any of them like any of them? Well, two of them deserve to be restricted. Did did they, though, back back then? The Condalabra can make a bunch of mana off of Urzalands. Oh, right. This is Antiquities. That's where the Urzalands came from. Duh. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, right, right. 
and Library of Alexandria, there has it's, never been a point when that card was fair. Yeah, it's just not solid. <laughs> uh, Ivory Tower was always one of those cards, sort of like Icy Manipulator, where if you were building a deck and it wasn't super aggressive, you played Ivory Tower. Mm-hmm. You just, just always. Yep. Because it was free life and you would always get it. And who's going to blow a removal spell on a Ivory Tower? Eh. It's not the thing that's going to kill you. Unfortunately, it's going to be the thing that may mean that you can never win, ever. And then Felden's Cane, I, I'm ever. not, I'm not sure about that one. I don't know. Maybe Ivory Tower and Felden's Cane being restricted were to discourage do nothing decks that just dragged out the game for forever. It could be. It might be like uh, the reason that they banned top so long ago in modern is because tournaments got to end sometime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that wasn't it for me, though. They unrestricted Gauntlet of Might and Dingus Egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time you say Dingus Egg, I'm like, <laughs> Dingus. I mean, is- it, it is an awesome card for back then. That's the one that deals damage when a land dies, right? No, when yes. a land enters the battlefield. Oh, no, it dies. No, no, that's this, the yeah, Ankh of Mishra enters right. the battlefield, which somehow, which in my mind is more oppressive than Dingus Egg, and is somehow escaping bannings because Ankh was in, wasn't that in Alpha? Yeah, Ankh's always been around. Yeah, but Ankh was Ankh was everybody, right? Ankh was everybody works on everybody. Yeah, I mean, so does the uh, the so egg, egg, but you're the only one playing. <laughs> land destruction, most likely. So, well, there were what three land destruction spells: sink, coal, stone, rain, and uh, ice storm, and strip mine. Right. So I was still correct because strip mine isn't a spell. True. Gotcha. Wait, ice storm. Yes. Yeah, the green one. Green and two. Green and two. Oh, that was real early, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was that an alpha card? I don't remember this. Yeah, one. stone rain, ice storm, and sinkhole were all in alpha. Oh. Ah, okay. Unlimited together. There you go. So okay, that's that's May. Those all make sense, or you can, if you can think about it from the early Magic perspective, you can sort of see why it might make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So then we move forward another month to June thirteenth, nineteen ninety four, where Mishra's Workshop is restricted. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Good job. No think, problems here. Think Nothing anyone who's ever played Vintage agrees, right? Mm-hmm. That back then yes, it should have been restricted. Yeah. Okay then. So now we have August. And I guess that Legends was recently released because of all the cards on here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So between between um, the cards that are specifically mentioned and then the uh, catch all there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's get this the the really silly one out of the way first. Divine Intervention is banned. <laughs> the third non anti card ever banned from tournament play was Divine Intervention, which is a essentially a, a delay thing that makes the game a draw. The card yeah. should just literally have a troll face on it. That should it, be the only thing. It should. If you zoom in on one of these angels, it should have a troll face, totally. You mad, bro? And so just because this one's really bizarre, for six white white, it's an enchantment. It enters the battlefield with two intervention counters on it now. This is the oracle text. Uh, At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an intervention counter from Divine Intervention. When you remove the last intervention counter, the game is a draw. I mean, look at it this way. It's certainly not causing (laughs) games to go long. (laughs) (laughs) How matches, however... Uh, so yeah, that was just straight up banned because that's ridiculous. <laughs> I remember, I think it was an, uh, I think it was an April issue, so it was an April Fool's thing of Inquest magazine, where uh, their featured, you know, crazy brood deck that they had in that in that um, issue was one where the whole point was so that you know players, you know, couldn't attack. People would be shuffling their libraries all the time. You're sitting there using fork to copy Shafrazad over and over again, and eventually the game ends in a draw because of divine intervention. Oh my God. I remember that. <laughs> it had soldier of fortune in it, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, yeah, it, it did. did. Yeah. No alliances. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So there's, there's a big one here for flavor reasons. <laughs> all of the legendary cards were restricted. 
kind of an interesting way to do it because Which, yeah. legends were new. So it was a way to say, hey, not only can there only be one out at a time, but you can only even play with one in your deck. Look yeah. at Hearthstone now. You know, so by you less literally of have user. two copies of any card in your deck. Uh, which I actually think is an interesting number because it encourages a little more, you know, um, originality. Three. Right, don't don't get hung up on Hearthstone. Keep going. But uh, but except for legendary cards, which you can only have one of. So I think this. I don't think this was just a tournament rule. I think it was a game rule. Because if I remember correctly, the, the the little rules insert that came in some booster packs of Legends explained that you can only have one of any given copy of a Legend in your deck. Really. I think so. It, it seems like marketing just uh, just stupidity, right? Here's this new set with all these, frankly, terrible cards in them, but don't buy too many packs because you can only play one of each of these. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if it's a if it's a set de- designed by people that are going to put a bunch of stupid vanilla legends that are re- that are like in references to their own D and D characters, yeah, they're going to make a dumb rule like that too. <laughs> I don't think I could argue with that. But hey, I mean, I kind of see it from their perspective. They're d- literally designing this game themselves. So if they want to throw in their own characters, sure, why not? And it's a reference for them, but nobody else is even going to know. So there's but, uh, there's an old Arcana here from 2002 uh, that said uh, there were two reasons. One was for rules reasons. If you only had one Torwalki in your deck, you wouldn't be tempted to have more than one in play very often because of the legend rule. Right. And the other reason was for flavor, which we just talked about. That's really funny. Okay, then. So that's that's that. Now, the other cards that were restricted, uh, we've got Chaos Orb. And yeah. Fallen Star. We might as well group them together because they're manual dexterity cards. Yep, they're the two. Completely forgot that uh, Falling Star was ever a thing. The Chaos Orb is the only one that gets any press. Yep. Wow. Okay. So yeah, they're the ones that you have to flip from over the playing area from a height of at least one foot. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Because magic needs rulers. Or something. So yeah, those and those are still like right now. What's what's banned in vintage? Anti cards, manual dexterity cards, and Shahrazad. And she and will, yeah. Divine intervention, I think, isn't it? No, no. Uh, it's legal. <laughs> Not that anyone's ever going to. Nice. Now you two can play for a draw. Conspiracies, you can't play in vintage. Correct. But. Yeah. Well, right, but that's the the whole card type. Yeah. Yeah, so... The card conspiracy is just fine. Well, I mean, it's kind of silly, but yeah. So yeah, those two were... They were just restricted, though. They weren't banned back then. That's really funny. <laughs> uh Mind Twist is restricted because... Yeah. Yes. Mind Twist is one of those cards that players these days look at and go, that doesn't seem too powerful, and then they get a cast <laughs> against them, and then they stop being stupid. Yeah, and, and then there's tears. There's real <laughs> tears. <laughs> What do you mean, my whole hand? <laughs> right, I don't get to pick which one I keep. <laughs> uh, Mirror Universe <laughs> was restricted. <laughs> this card, yeah. not enough goatees really on funny. the bad people. And because of the way that rules worked back then, it was actually possible to exchange this with your opponent when you had less than zero life. Yep, and then win. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for going to all the war, all the trouble of like killing me. Oh, by the way, you lose now. So L- Lich Mirror was one of the early combo decks. <laughs> Any card with Lich in the name, I'm telling you, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy powerful. They should all be mythic. So- <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> that happens to be the only word in the name of <laughs> this card. Yeah, Lich. Uh, recall is restricted. I love recall. This one's weird. Why, why is, is this weird? one? Re- why is this one restricted? I guess because it's a regrowth that can get multiple things at a time, even though you have to balance it out by discarding stuff. Yeah. There you go. Uh, one of Brian's favorite cards, Underworld Dreams, was restricted. Yep. I saw that. I'm like, yeah, boy. Which I'm guessing because of reasons. I don't know why this one would have been restricted back then. I'm not sure either. I mean, there might be another thing it. where it's like, uh, that's a really mean card. Let's restrict it. Because Dark Ritual Underworld Dreams go. 
Yeah. <laughs> that could be a thing. Mm, Dark Ritual. Mm, mm. You know, the amount of cards that we're going to get to later that were banned because Dark Ritual X Go, but Dark Ritual kept getting reprinted. At some point, <laughs> you think they would have realized, wait, it just Dark makes mana. Ritual's the problem. we got to stop printing cards that you can use mana for. Yeah. <laughs> like literally every large expansion set. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. The, the best card is still the Mirage Art, by the way. I don't know. Hers is pretty cool. I really like the Tempest Art. All right, then. I do not like the Ice Age art. Uh, <laughs> is anything else? Is that yeah, everything? There, there's one more that was uh, ban- uh, restricted in August. Sword of the Ages. What in the name of all that is holy is this card? <laughs> it was early equipment, yo. It was Thanks not. That no, it isn't. No. Is. Not no. this one. This card is just straight up bad. You're thinking of something else, Brian. You need to read this. You're thinking of Sword of the Ancients, I think. Oh. See, that's what they get for, you know, naming every card the same. And there's a tag, sacrifice any number of creatures. What? (laughs) Yeah, read it it out loud. (laughs) Okay. Try not to laugh while doing so. Should I read the Oracle text or the printed text? Oracle. Yeah. All right. It enters the battlefield tapped. It's an artifact that costs six, and uh, you tap it and sacrifice it and any number of creatures you control. Sword of the Ages deals X damage to target creature or player, where X is the n- total power of the creature sacrificed this way, then exile Sword of the Ages and those creature cards. <laughs> sacrifice the creatures that you've s- exiled, the creature cards that you sacrificed? What? Yeah. That's because they're trying to stay close to the way the card was written. So you sack them, and then you exile them from your graveyard? Mm Mm-hmm. That's dumb. Yes. Yes, it is. (laughs) Now, it's kind of interesting where you basically turn every creature you want into basically this massive burn spell, but... I mean, the card... I don't think the card is bad in the way... But it's not, like... Chris makes it sound, because it's essentially get enough creatures on the board, win the game... But Next why turn. is it? Why is it? <laughs> Maybe. Why is it restricted? Ah, see, that's it. This card costs six mana, and then you have to wait a turn to use it and have creatures in play. Yeah. Sounds awesome to me. Yeah, oh. I mean, didn't they print a fling all card the, whose name I can't remember? Uh, yeah, many, Soulfire. Many, yeah, that's right, Soulfire. Yeah, many, many, Kamigawa? many, many mm-hmm. years later. Kamigawa Soulfire also costs six. Yeah, but it happens not, right now. <laughs> and it doesn't in red. And it doesn't exile the creatures. Yeah, well, you know. At least they're not uh, then removed from the game entirely. <laughs> the Put them in your binder. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> Absolutely removed from the freaking game. <laughs> uh, and then, so that's uh, that's August. And then two months later, we go October 10th, where they've restricted Maze of Ith. Because screw Maze of Ith. Because Once screw again, four copies of Maze of Ith. Correct. <laughs> Tournament's got to end sometime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that does it for just 1994. Now, so there are some things here that I, I would like to point out. There are no creatures here. That matter. <laughs> There's a very good reason for that. And, yeah, and uh, it's because magic back in the day was so very like spell intensive. Sir, Ali from Cairo would like a word, sir. Like I As said, we- creatures <laughs> that matter. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you speak <laughs> Egyptian, because otherwise you're not going to understand what Ali is telling you. But he would not like a word with you. Every time I say speak Egyptian when we're playing Overwatch, I get yelled at. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And yeah, this this is a thing that you'll see for a very long time throughout this conversation is that it's all spells and artifacts. And lots of them have to do with making lots of mana or getting mana through some other means. Cough, channel, cough. <laughs> or like suddenly turning one card into five cards out of nowhere. Also that. Or in the case of things like um, Maze of Ith and Ice and Manipulators, making creatures even worse. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't have it hard enough already. Exactly. So then we move to 1995, where things went along fine after the October uh, update. 
And then in January, January 10th to be exact, they created Type 1 and Type 2. Well, they created Type 2, and the magic that we'd been playing all this time was just sort of called Type 1. Yep. And you know what I started playing in 2002 and 2003? It was still called Type 2. Wow, really? That's Yeah. yeah. That's trippy. Good lord. It was, we, wasn't it? Oh my god. We, we call it Standard now, yeah. in case you were wondering. So, but yeah. Uh, Standard, or Type 2, inherited the, the ban and restricted list from Type 1, and then they started to uh, split eventually. Yeah, and they also set up the rotation schedule. Eventually. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess they did do it here. Yeah. So legal standard was the most current basic set, which at the time was revised, and the latest two magic expansions, which were the Dark and Fallen Empires. Oh, oh my God. God, that sounds <laughs> miserable. Good luck, guys. Ugh. And unlike in Vintage, the judge cannot ban cards from any such legal expansion. It wow. doesn't, it doesn't, I note it, he, it doesn't note it here, but also, wasn't it a requirement that you also have so many cards from the newest set as well? I, I don't think, think those were specific. Standard. I think those were specific to Pro Tour or World Championship. Events. Okay, yeah, okay. I think so. Because I know for Homelands, people were like serrated arrows and more serrated arrows. Exactly. So at least Fallen Empires had Pump Knights and and uh, him to Torak. But I, just, I like how the business model has shifted from we don't want you to play with the new cards to somebody realizing, hey, we need to sell these packs of new cards. So <laughs> let's start allowing them to do it to, okay, now you can do it unless we tell you otherwise, to you have to do it. You have to play with the new cards. <laughs> you, it, it's not even that it's in your best interest to do it. You literally have to do it to have a tournament legal deck. So, <laughs> so now we have formats. And on April 19th, Wizards of the Coast's team finally switched on their brains. Finally. And in, rest- <laughs> yeah, in both formats, they restricted Fork, which okay. doesn't sound too bad until you realize all of the other cards that were being played. Yeah. And how powerful the spells were in relation yeah. to the creatures at this time. Yeah, and they restricted Balance. Which did not... How did that survive two years? I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's fair. Everyone has to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's like Wrath of God, but it hits everything and costs... Yeah, it's a Wrath of God, it's a Mind Twist, and it's an Armageddon for two mana. Sold! (laughs) (laughs) Take that for data. (laughs) It's too bad they didn't have Magic Online back then. They would have known right away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, then we move... Now, that was was it for 95 until October. Yep. So you can tell that they're starting to get the hang of it. Like, okay, we think we've got this figured out. And in October, there's not even a ban and restricted list update. It's just new deck construction rules where they decided standard or type two could be the most recent edition of magic, which at the time was fourth white border extensions like Chronicles (laughs) and all available limited edition expansions from standard, I guess. So Ice Age, Fallen Empires and then Homelands coming soon. I would also like to point out. Is that, like a, is that out, a promotion or a threat? Uh, yeah, well, I would also like to point out this is about when I started playing for the first time, uh, yeah. with Scott, my old roommate Scott, and, uh, Shoop. And it was, it was, it was a weird was time. Shoop the whoop? Uh, he was not charging his laser. Yeah. yeah, I think I first learned how to play in like March or April of this year. Nice. Just one up me, Mike. Go right ahead. It's fine. That's what he does. That's what he does. <laughs> So then we okay. go all the way. I, I first learned how to play incorrectly in March of April. <laughs> March of oh, April. Well, that's, that's how we all first learned how to play. <laughs> uh, so then we make it to November where they decide, okay, this is silly. Legendary cards are unrestricted. <laughs> Let's not fool with flavor. We're just going to stick to power level. Fine. Uh, in, well, okay. In both vintage and standard or type one and type two, they decided to ban channel completely. Which tells me that they've reprinted Channel all the way up to 4th edition, those morons. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also restricted Zurin Orb, 
which looking at it today, you're like, that's not so much. Zern Orb was another of those. Just throw Zern Orb in the deck. You'll never lose. Mm -hmm. Also, but this was pre sixth edition rules where it was possible to go Armageddon. I have no interrupts. Sacrifice all my lands to Zern Orb. Yeah. And then they couldn't counter your Armageddon. Yeah. 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 Just so mm -hmm. lose. Uh, also in Vintage, they decided that the two manual dexterity cards should be banned. So mm -hmm. Chaos Orb and Falling Star were banned. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's 95. We're going to start moving faster now, uh, you guys. Uh, 96. February Not of 96. Purpose, but, you know, because we need, but because that's how it works. Yeah. Go ahead. So in 96, in both formats, they restricted Black Vise. Which was mm -hmm. just brutal on turn one. Yeah. Like, turn one black vise means mm -hmm. you start the game at like 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they start sync calling you and it's just like the yeah. least fun yeah. thing. Unfortunately, yeah. black vise getting restricted opened up the door to necropotence, but oh well. But oh well. Uh, they also banned mind twist in both formats. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Which. Again, they had kept printing it up through fourth edition. <laughs> Good job, guys. Really stellar, just awesome. <laughs> uh, so both of those make perfect sense. Let's Again, Mind on. Twist is just so good with Dark Ritual, so we should probably just ban Mind Twist to go with the other cards that are really good with Dark Ritual. <laughs> Duh. Um, are you sensing a pattern yet? And actually, turn one, uh, Swamp, Dark Ritual, Black Vise, Sinkhole, Your Land. That's a thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's a horrible, horrible thing that happened a lot. A thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just threw up a little. Yes, you did. And that's why they restricted Black Vi. <laughs> uh, so then we move to April, where in, uh, standard, the mm -hmm. unrestricted Felden's Cane and Recall. Smaller card pools means less things to get back, which lowers the power level of cards that get you stuff back. And also at this point, there weren't moxin anymore or things like that. Right. So yeah, your, your, not only was your card pool smaller, but your stupid power level was way down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ice Age and what was it? Ice Age and Fallen Empires and Homelands. Eh, it's probably not much you need to have those banned for or restricted for. Right. <laughs> uh, in Vintage, however, they unbanned Time Vault because they eroded it. Was this when they put the time counter thing on it? That yes, yep. mm -hmm. like directly below it on the page. It stayed for a long time. Oh, was it? Oh, it is. Look at that. So yeah, now instead of just being able to untap it with something to take another turn, it added a time counter when you uh, used it, and to untap it, you had to skip a turn. Well, to untap it, you had to remove the time counter, and the only way to remove the time counter was to skip a turn. Yay! Power level. Oh uh, no! No other way. The only way to add a time counter to it was to skip a turn. And you had to remove a time counter to take an extra turn. Oh, so you had to skip the turn first. Yes. Yeah, that was always the case. You always had this – because Time Vault enters the battlefield tapped. Well, except you could just untap it with something. Yeah. So now you have to skip a turn to get an extra turn yeah, instead of working around. Mm -hmm. And now that it's terrible, let's unban it. <laughs> uh, they also decided to unrestrict Sword of the Ages <laughs> – Black Vies, that didn't last long. That didn't last long at all. That lasted, what, two months? Huh. Two months. And they unrestricted Ali from Cairo. Woohoo! Those maniacs. <laughs> How could they unleash the power of Sword of the Ages on this format? Had they no clue? You could put Ali from Cairo, too, and deal them zero. <laughs> no, they didn't have clues yet. So. Yeah, that was way later. Yeah. I mean, he was born at the time, but he didn't start playing till Zendikar. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, that was April. And in May, it didn't take long. So in January of 95, they created Type 1 and Type 2. In May of 96, they created Type 1.5. Mm -hmm. which, which we is now know as Legacy. Chris, best format. Now the top has been banned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> so it's... Uh, let's see. Type 1.5 tournament decks may be constructed from Magic the Gathering cards from the limited... Series, that's, uh, Alpha and Alpha Beta. Beta. The Unlimited, Revised, 4th Edition, 
any Magic the Gathering expansion, unless expressly disallowed by the judge prior to the event, there's that writer still, and promotional cards released by Wizards of the Coast in magazines or through books. Like Arena. Like Arena. And Rysorian Badger. The powerhouse that, that it was. <laughs> uh, there are no restricted cards, only banned cards, uh, the only banned cards, the initial list of which is the sum of all cards that are either restricted or banned in vintage. So it was really type 1.5, like for realsies and serious, instead yeah. of the restricted list with the banned, banned list. It was just none of this just nonsense. Banned. It's just banned. Yeah. Mind you, standards still had a restricted list during this time period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. And in fact, in July, they restricted a card in standard and banned it in legacy. Yeah, they restricted land tax. One of the most boring cards to play against in the history of Magic the Gathering. Yeah, but one of the most powerful. Oh, for sure. In fact, it was only unbanned in Legacy a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the ban hammer landed on land tax and <laughs> Legacy because... <laughs> but they didn't restrict it in Vintage or Type 1. Weird. That is weird. <laughs> Yeah, for, I mean, it wasn't always the policy that, um, the legacy band list was exactly the same as the sum of the vintage band and restricted list. Sometimes that was the policy and sometimes they were a little bit off in relation to one another, but they didn't usually stay too far off. Huh. Well, how about that? I had just assumed that they stayed one to one for a long time. Nope. Two months. <laughs> how about that? Cash him outside. <laughs> so that was July. We moved to October of 1996, where in standard, <laughs> him to Turok and Strip Mine were both restricted. Correct. Hey. Wait, why was Strip Mine in standard? Because it was in fourth edition. edition. Fourth, right. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> Those jerks. Uh, yeah, what the hell were they thinking? Uh, and him to Turok, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Remember when that card was fun to put? No. No. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> you do not, sir. <laughs> you might think you do, but you were in fact wrong and a horrible person. So. Wasn't it banned from a pro tour by popular vote of the players? Maybe. That sounds about right. Uh, about right. I uh -huh. don't remember that story. But that's not this episode, so it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that, that's standard. In Legacy, they banned Strip Mine and Fast Bond. Again, correct. And so, Fastbot, let me read this to you for those that don't know, because this was a good one. You may play any number of lands on each of your turns. It costs a green. It costs a green. A green. <laughs> one, one single solitary green mana. Whenever you, so, and you can play any number of lands on each of your turns. Whenever you play a land, if it wasn't the first land you played this turn, Fastbot deals one damage to you. Oh darn. Oh darn. A whole, yeah, a see, whole, a whole damage? Fine. You take damage. You take damage. Yeah, it's totally, totally fair. No, no, no. But I, I just broken it. Once I put all my lands into play, I can cast stream, stream of, of life. life. And gain it all back. <laughs> broken. Actually, it wouldn't surprise me if that was a thing back then. <laughs> so yeah, fast bond and strip mine were banned, and they restricted fast bond in vintage. Yeah, and again, strip mine was not affected. By this. So, it, Vent, Vintage and Legacy, uh, further, di uh, uh, diverted from each other, which I really didn't realize. Vintage sounds like a real fun format at this point. Yeah. Now, there's also oh. a thing here that's very important. The judge can't disallow any magic expansion anymore in Legacy oh. and Vintage, which oh. was a very strange rule that I don't understand. And if anyone out there knows about that, please let me know what the hell that was all about, but it lasted until October of 96. I don't think it ever happened in practice. I think it was just a, cause remember when that rule was originally written, the expansions were all supposed to have different backs. And then they were worried about things like, well, what if there are card availability issues? What if there's some busted card that we don't have time to fix? So they just gave the judge the flexibility to do that. I don't, I would be very surprised if it was ever exercised in a, in a major event. I'm sure some Joe Schmo at Jimmy's Card Shack in Hoboken must have banned Arabian Nights at some point. Oh man, hey, don't talk bad about Joe Schmo. He's an awesome player. 
Yeah. No, no, Jimmy not and his card shack. The one in Hoboken. Yeah. Ho- yeah that guy in Hoboken sucks. Yeah. So 1997. To be fair, he does live in Hoboken. I, I mean, you know, that's, that's one strike for everybody. Uh, so 1997. Uh, January standard new deck construction rules. So. Yeah. Just, just, just don't read that, Chewie. It gets, yeah, they, they're, they're tweaking how standard works. And this then. This is when I started playing. Do what? This is when I started playing. Ah, January okay. 97. And then there's the important thing. All cards on the restricted list are moved to the banned list. They stopped having a restricted list in standard in 1997. Yep. Okay. They're also, there was also block constructed apparently at this point because in Ice Age block, flying glaciers and Zeranorb were both banned. Woo-hoo. And I, I mean, think they were pretty good in standard, so. Yeah, well, I think in Ice Age Block especially, please, please ban those. Yeah. Yeah, that seems good. <laughs> seems, and, yeah, seems yeah, appropriate. That was in May of 97. In June of 97, they banned Zeran Orb in standard. Probably for the same reason that they, uh, restricted it in the, uh, the others. Except wait, it was already restricted. Yeah, I wonder if there's a continuity error here. I wonder if there is. Because it was already restricted in standard. Maybe they forgot to move it to the ban list. I mean, that they, that could be. They've done stuff like that before. Let's see what this... Uh, eh. There's a reference here in this Game P article that's not loading, so we'll go back to that when it loads. So let's see here. Oh, wait, here we go. Control F, Zernorb. Okay. Before 1996, cards could be restricted in standard... At the end of 96, standard change to the ban list only with all cards previously restricted shifting onto the new ban list. Okay, Zern Orb was the first card to make the new standard ban list. What? Oh, the strange timing of the banning was also due to the different formats still being in flux. Ice Age, the set in which Zern Orb was printed, actually briefly left standard before returning to standard. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, this is the, the bit that I didn't read apparently caused some issues. So yeah, that's why they had to reban it because it had already left standard. Well, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. So then we move to July where we have more that construction and they announced in May, they announced extended and it was officially sanctioned in July. And the official ban list, the day zero ban list, as I refer to the, the modern uh, day zero ban list is cards from Alpha and Beta Unlimited, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, and Legends that have not been reprinted. So any card not currently in whatever extended was. Anti cards and additionally, Demonic Tutor, Balance, Fast Bond, Regrowth, Black Vies, Ivory Tower, Serendib Afrit. What? <laughs> what? Maybe because it's only reprint was a misprint, and also because it was a really solid creature. Oh, okay, yeah, the revised edition misprint might have something to do with that. Maybe? Maybe, Maybe. I don't know. That's but then I see they're still hating on Brain Geyser, so I have no idea what's going on there. Brain Geyser. Okay. Uh, Soul Ring Juggernaut. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Too much power for the cost. Do you know the story behind Juggernaut? I was muted. I was saying stuff for the longest time. Oh, really? Well, you didn't hear a thing. No, Not a single thing. So do, do you want to know, do you want to know the story behind Juggernaut? Oh, wait, let yes. me, let me finish reading the list first. Strip mine, oh. channel, curd ape, <laughs> which at the time probably made sense because it's really good. <laughs> it's, it's like a tiny karmagoy. Yeah. Mana crypt, which is one of the promo cards. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, media inserts or whatever they're, the, the book cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maze of Ith, Wheel of Fortune, Mind Twist, and Zurin Orb. So all of those are things that make perfect sense, except for, uh, Kurt Ape, unless you know how it was. Cause back then, remember, creatures were terrible, and Kurt Ape is still pretty good. So, yes, it's East Modern Play, so. Yeah, so that one I, I sort of get. The Serendipity Free, the only thing we can think of is the reprint issue, and maybe because it's actually really powerful? It's a 3-4 flyer for 3 in blue, and blue doesn't get creatures like that. Yeah. And then Juggernaut. So what is the story of Juggernaut, Mr. Lansdell, sir? You're, you are going to think I'm making this up, but this is 100% true. The, the rationale given when Juggernaut was banned was 
we realize that Juggernaut enchanted with, invinci- with invisibility would essentially be unblockable, which is too powerful for tournament play. Ha! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, just, it's too powerful. I am willing to believe that actually happened. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's sad, but it's true. Oh, we laughed when they said that. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's keep banning all these black cards that cost three. <laughs> and <laughs> not Dark Ritual. <laughs> Dark Ritual's fine. No, that card's fine. It's not the problem. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, hang on. How much does invisibility cost? What? Invisibility cost, is it one or two? Two. It's it's two blue blue. blue blue. Okay, so for six mana, mm-hmm. your, your you opponent gotta... will be dead in four turns. <laughs> Remember that Juggernaut is a five three, and Lightning Bolt is legal and extended. And invisibility just says it can't be blocked except by walls, right? Correct, but Juggernaut yes. can't be blocked by walls, Chewy. Yeah, so and invisibility you doesn't make stop. it untargetable or anything like that, listeners. It's nope. just five three unblockable is too good. And you can't stop attacking even if you want to. <laughs> well, we, why would you want to? It's unblockable. Oh, my God. So powerful. Also, I might be wrong on this. I'm pretty sure when Extended was announced, uh, they initially made it so that the banned list excluded dual lands. I think you're right. Because they wanted people to initially be able to play with the dual lands as a transitional measure until more sets became legal in the format. I think I, yeah, I think I remember that too. Well, they were still in revised, right? They were. Mm-hmm. So that's what's getting me to doubt this. That might have been in standard that that was part of when that was created. Or maybe when revised was supposed to rotate out of extended, the dual lens got to stay for a while. That's also possible. Also, extended at the time was called 1.x. But I know that at some point there was a except the dual lens. Mm-hmm. That's really weird. Yes. Interesting. I think I remember that. That sounds super familiar. This is, this is the time when I was just getting addicted to magic. I would work all day at EB Games, leave EB Games and go to the real game store and just sit there until they made me leave. Ah, okay. All right. Well, moving on. That's extended, which no longer matters, but we'll be talking more about extended shortly. Um, in vintage, they restricted black vies, which Poor I- black vies. <laughs> They just unrestricted it. Yeah, what? Oh, it lasted like two months, and then they took it off. Yeah, in February, they restricted it. In April of 96, they unrestricted it. And then in July of 97, they're like, nope, restricted again. <laughs> Sorry, our bad. Still still too good. The original Golgari Grave Troll. <laughs> <laughs> and then in, in Mirage Block, they banned squandered resources. Thank you, Mike Long. Oh, is that a thing? Not because yeah. of the card in the lap, but because of Prost Bloom, the, the deck. Yeah, yeah it was a really killer part of Prosperous Bloom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for a black and a green, it's an enchantment, listeners. Sack a land, add to your mana pool one mana of any type the sack land could produce. So yeah, yeah. Seems good. Uh, and then in October, that was July. In October, in Extended, they banned Hypnotic Specter. <laughs> <laughs> because swapped Dark Ritual Hypnotic Spectre, too good. <laughs> Dark Ritual's yeah. fine, though. <laughs> and then they unbanned Juggernaut because, let's face it, that was silly. <laughs> They're like, all right, all right, all right, our bad. <laughs> yeah. We just couldn't imagine a way around a 5-3 unblockable. We're so sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Just off the top of my head, things that were legal at the time, Lightning Bolt, Disenchant, Shatter. Incinerate. Incinerate. (laughs) But I can't terror it. It doesn't die to Doomblade. No, it doesn't (laughs) die to terror. (laughs) You know why? It's because the Juggernaut knows no fear. (laughs) Dog banishing. Uh, Okay, so uh, that was extended. In Vintage, they unrestricted Candelabra, Mm -hmm. Copy Artifact... Felden's Cane, Mishra's <laughs> Workshop, and Zerg. No, don't Orb. do it! <laughs> Not Felden's Cane! You maniacs! <laughs> <laughs> you blew it up. Oh, darn. Wow. They un- <laughs> they unrestricted the workshop. And this... Yep. Wait. Is that... 
Yeah, that's and that's been unrestricted ever since. And that's yeah. why it's a deck now in vintage still to this day. And then everything went swimmingly for over a year, and then everything went to hell in a handbasket. Yep. A, a handbasket is not a strong enough word. <laughs> yeah, so that was a bog. <laughs> It was, yep. it was the express express train to hell. So that was October of 97. Fast forward all the way to December of 1998 oh when the world ended. Yep. Well, it was going to. Combo winter. Was was this combo winter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the early game was the coin flip. Mid game was mulligans and the end game was turns one and two. Oh. Damn. So in standard, Talarian Academy and Windfall are banned. In extended, Talarian Academy and Windfall are banned. In legacy, Talarian Academy and Windfall are banned. In vintage, Talarian Academy and Windfall are restricted. Now there are a couple others, but mm-hmm. did you, did you maybe, see a trend here? <laughs> did you think maybe Talarian Academy was, uh, was a good cut? Maybe just a, just a little bit. I have, uh, you know, I am noticing something here, and it's the dark ritual is still legal. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You know why, Brian? It can't actually cast any of those cards on turn one. No, it can't cast Hilarion <laughs> Academy on turn one. All no, it can't. Oh. Yeah, don't worry. Dark ritual would still be printed in yet another large expansion set after this. So. Just to give you an idea of how busted the the Academy deck was, Vintage and Legacy were formats where you could play four Wasteland and four Strip Mine, and Academy was still too good. Yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, so, in Extended, also so, with this, they unbanned Brain Geyser. Yeah. Right after they banned the two cards that were busted with it. Yeah. Supposedly, didn't all of R and D get taken into the office and yelled at? Not or... yet. Not yet. That comes in March. Okay. They had to wait a couple months. All right. Sorry. So I forgot to unmute. Uh, in Legacy, in addition to those two, they banned Stroke of Genius as well. I'm assuming same reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They basically, yeah. And also they unbanned Brain Geyser because they figure, well, if we're printing Stroke, why do we need to have Brain Geyser banned? Yeah. Uh, so in Legacy, they, they also banned Stroke of Genius and they unbanned Feldon's Cane. Yay. Those monsters. <laughs> and then in Vintage, uh, Stroke of Genius was also restricted along with the Academy and Windfall. But why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Why not? Oh, God. So that that was all of 98. Just the one massive thing happened in December. They almost made it through a whole year without an entry. And then then they figured, okay, banning Academy and Windfall will make all of these silly decks that draw a whole bunch of cards multiple times and untap lands and make infinite mana on turn three. It'll make them all go away. We only need to ban these two cards. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool sound. Like we're we're good now, right? <laughs> we're good forever. And by forever I mean <sighs> not very long. At least three months. So in March of ninety nine. When I see some of the cards on this list for standard, I'm like, how 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 how? how? <laughs> Why are they still they- here? How could they be in standard at the same time? <laughs> well, most of these are from two sets. Yeah. This is when R&D sort of, there was a pooch, yeah. and they were like, you know what we're going to do to that pooch? <laughs> yeah. Wow, we talk about wow. the family show. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, wait, let's, let's start easy. Vintage. They restricted Time Spiral. Because, duh. Makes sense. And they unrestricted Maze of Ith. Because, eh, no one even plays with creatures anymore. Nobody's attacking. Yeah, yeah so the best thing on the list is silly. Um, in Legacy, they banned Time Spiral and Memory Jar. Okay, those make sense. And they unbanned Candelabra, Copy Artifact, Maze of Ith, Zurin Orb, and Workshop. Huh. 
I didn't realize Workshop was ever unbanned in Legacy. Is Workshop currently banned in Legacy? Uh, it yes. is. You're, you're not going to see on this page where it was banned. I checked on that earlier. It was um, – there's something uh, that happens in September of 2004 when Legacy becomes independent from Vintage. And there's a big shift in what's banned and unbanned. And that's when Shops gets banned again at Legacy. Oh, okay. Got it. So – so wait, they were still tied together at this point, even though they were different? Yeah. Like Selma and Louise jumping off that, uh, off that cliff. They were still, jumping. they were still tied together, even though there were some small differences. Like some of the changes happened, uh, in different announcements where they're like, oops, we forgot to do this, you know, last month or several months ago. Oh, okay. The, Neat. uh, quality assurance that Wizards of the Coast in the early years was, uh, it's not great, Bob. <laughs> Not really. So, okay, moving on. 99. That was Legacy. Okay, in Urza Block Constructed, they banned Time Spiral, Memory Jar, and Windfall. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, we're gonna skip Extended in Standard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so this, this, this was apparently March 1st. Uh, when all this happened. In Standard, they banned the following cards. Dream Halls. Broken. Just stop right there. <laughs> what on earth was Dreamhall doing in standard? So being to banned. Give you, to give you an idea of how busted Dreamhalls was, they recently funk they reprinted it in a way only without the minor drawback, and it cost ten. Dreamhalls costs five. <laughs> what's that what's that new card called? The one with Jace on it? The Omniscience? Omniscience, thank you. Does it have Jace on it? I never noticed. Yeah. Omniscience. What has it done? All the things, apparently. Oh, I guess that is Jace. Yes, yes, it is. So. So that's just, but that's just one card. That's just one card. Earthcraft. Broken. Broken. <laughs> El Busto. A little bit. Also, Squirrel's Nest was also a legal card at this time. Uh, was it? I thought uh, that was from. Odyssey. Was it? Let me check. Squirrels. Tomorrow and his right. love of squirrels. Nope. Squirrel Nest was... Oh, yeah. It was Odyssey. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fluctuator. Busto. <sighs> <laughs> I think we talked about that when we were talking about making cycling cards cost less, but not in a broken way. Yeah. Well, this deck, it was one of the worst decks ever for the cards that you played in it. Basically, the only playable cards in it were Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Living Death. Everything else was Cycling Cards and Fluctuator. Yep. Yeah, it was basically the an old, old, old Living End. <laughs> Did I draw my deck? Did I draw my Living End or my Living Death? No? Okay, I lose. <laughs> uh, we're still not done. Lotus Petal. Well, duh. Yeah. Uh, recurring Nightmare. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is another card that pay- players today look at and go, well, this doesn't seem that good. And then you explain it to them, and then they go, yeah, that still doesn't sound good. And then you play it against them in a cube draft and absolutely ruin their lives. <laughs> it really seems so innocuous, doesn't it? You're like, they're rushing. Having, yeah. They're having to pay so much for it and da 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 no, no, no. No, it's fine. You got a second creature, yeah. See, this is how the fair. conversation normally goes. But it doesn't seem so good. Okay, how do you destroy it? Well, I just dis- when uh, you after know. you cast it. Okay, uh, when do you have priority? Well, after you activate it. Nope. Read the return to hand clause. Oh, uh, I guess I lose. Yep. <laughs> so I kill all your creatures first. That's yeah. That's the only time. Then your lands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all and- I need to do is remove all your permanents from the game forever. Then I'm safe. No, the still... only way to be... yeah, oh, we're ahead. not done. Yeah, we're still not done. The... I was gonna say the only way to really be safe from a, a recurring nightmare is to give up magic forever and start playing like Uno or something. <laughs> well, Tomod's crypt was around, wasn't it? Not in the dark. I said it wasn't legal in standard. I guess let me check. But so we are we are still not done because yeah. so time spiral was also banned. Just to round out the cards that were banned on March first. Not the set. <laughs> the set wasn't around yet. Well, to be fair, it also wasn't legal and standard at this time. 
<laughs> so now let's let's be clear here. These cards were in the March first announcement, but the ban list wasn't going to take effect for thirty days. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. But understood. Uh, after um, this announcement, things took a turn. Let's say. <laughs> And they yeah. added Memory Jar to the ban list for Standard and Extended midway through March as an emergency ban. By things took a turn, you mean Urza's Legacy was released. Yes. <laughs> Which is literally the only thing that changed. Yes. And then the public was like, um, are you mental? You cannot print Memory Jar in a format with Megrim and Dark Ritual. Nah, Dark Ritual is oh. fine. Yeah, Dark Ritual's fine. Yeah. <laughs> So in mid March, they were like, oops, we're going to add this to the ban list. It's still going to be banned uh, when all this other stuff is. Yeah. So what, it's, it's a emergency jar is, ban. Is Memory Jar the only card to ever be banned before it was actually available? Yes. yes. It was, it is the first card to be banned before it was tournament legal. And, and so far, still the only one, right? Yes. Was, was Mind's Desire restricted in, restricted in vintage before it was available? Not before it was available, no. Okay. Huh. Te- well, very shortly technically, technically, because the ban was retroactive to March first, Memory Jar was banned before it was legal. Mind's Desire was banned on day one. Okay, got it. Well, there you go then. So yeah, when people so nowadays we talk about the the emergency ban of Memory Jar, it's not like there was a tournament and it was all Memory Jars and they were like, oh god, and they banned it on the spot. They didn't let it get that far. Yeah, they they saw it and they went, what have we done? And they added it, it most, to the ban list yeah. only like a week and change ahead of time instead of the full 30 days. Yeah, it isn't, it isn't part of the story – isn't part of the story like Randy Bueller was going around the office with this completely insane deck that he built and people were starting to say, oh, no. I hadn't heard that one, but that wouldn't surprise me. Hmm. Let's see here. So, Yeah. This was the part where everybody got called into the office and basically got chewed out, right? Yes. Okay. What have you fools done? Um, they said that a lot in this three month period. <laughs> so yeah, but this was according now. If if there there's a uh, there's a reference here, number thirty two. Click it. It takes it to a uh, Mark Rosewater Tumblr post, and he says, "We have never ever banned a card." That was then immediately banned outside of abandoning and restriction announcement ever. <laughs> and that's still true. It's not like they said, okay, we're going to ban this today. Yeah. Exactly. They, that, that's some, that's some real high quality hand waving right there, Mr. Rosewater. <laughs> but he's right. But, you know, it, yeah. I mean, and this, this blog of talk post was from February of 2016. So this has nothing to do with the cat. So uh, do you know, you know what still was broken and standard at this point? Dark Everything Ritual was untapping lands that make more than one mana and casting huge card draw spells to keep doing it and eventually kill your opponent. Oh, is that a problem? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you know, it might just be. So once they banned Talarian Academy and then they banned the Dream Halls version, people started playing with Wild Growth and Fertile Ground, which I believe was in Urza's Dest- uh, Saga. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I believe some decks, some versions had Mana Flare, but they played it with Sarah Sanctum. (laughs) And (laughs) that was making a ton of mana, and then they would use Mind Over Matter to untap the Sarah Sanctum, and things like Frantic Search was still legal, and yeah, things got very silly. It's amazing, but if you take a game and you have broken cards and mechanics and you gear it toward competitive play and you keep banning the things that make it broken, but you leave some in the game, those highly competitive players will keep finding ways to play the broken cards. It's amazing. You know, why don't they just start having fun like the rest of us, right? 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 Yeah, but not Dark Ritual, though. That's fine. Not Dark... No, no, that's fine. It's totally fine. So, yeah, Yeah. given what Chris just said, in June, in Standard, they banned Mind Over Matter. (laughs) Yeah, let's get that out of here. Because that was the problem with that deck. That was the problem all along. Funny story, originally the mana cost on that was blue, blue, four. That <laughs> would have been an even worse mistake. <laughs> you ever played against Mind Over Matter like an EDH? No, sir. I have. 
That was so fun. <laughs> so fun. Um, it was it was kind of one of those decks where and the guy was very straightforward about it, but it was like, why am I even here? You're literally just doing this to get yourself off. So <laughs> good job. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Cards. Well, no, not when you're at home, but like, so, you know, when you're at a store. Yeah, we're at a card shop, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. So that was standard. They banned Mind Over Matter and killed that problem. In Extended, they banned Time Spiral. I don't know how it survived. I, yeah, I was wondering that myself. And then too, in too Urza much block, other stuff getting in the way, I think. Just, oh, that, just that too much be. other stuff to get focus on. In Urza Block Constructed, they banned Gaia's Cradle, Sarah's Sanctum, Telerid Academy. You seeing a trend there? <laughs> and Voltaic Key. You seeing so a saying, trend there? You saying fast mana's bad? Like too much fast mana is bad. The unlimited so, fast mana is bad. The, they didn't ban Grim Monolith, but they did ban Voltaic Key. Yeah, Grim Monolith. So at this time, Grim Monolith, Mana Vault, uh, Thran Dynamo, Worn Power Stone were all legal in standard. And that's why all of these high casting cost enchantments were actually playable. Because you could do dumb things like on turn two, like turn one Voltaic Key, turn two Grim Monolith, tap it. Untap it with Voltaic Key, tap it again, Mana Vault, Worn Power Stone, and that just, just goes stupidly crazy. Uh, yeah. And what he's talking about isn't even really like magical Christmas land. It's just, no. uh, these yeah. are just the cards in your deck. It's, it's called turn two. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was June of 99. In August, they banned the Ogmas Bargain from Extended. Really? You don't say. <laughs> so we've got Necropotence, but the wording on it is so clunky, and you have to wait to get the cards. Who wants to wait? But how much would it cost to make it fair? Let's double the cost. Do you think that's safe? I'm sure that's safe. Let's let's do that. <laughs> Turn to Second Swamp, Ritual, Ritual, Yogmas Bargain. <laughs> Obviously, ritual, it's fine. Ritual's fine. It's fine. Ritual's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh god, this was the, this was the, uh, the days of power level errata. Yes, it was. Like yeah. we talked about with the time vault. Well, now they're like, you know, all the creatures that when they enter the battlefield, they untap basically the number of lands it would take to cast them, except, oh wait, some of these lands are making more than one mana. You know, they all got power level uh, errata where basically it's if you played it from your hand, so you avoided some shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. And Lion's Eye Diamond. Ugh. <laughs> Which was terrible for a while, and then they removed the power level errata and everybody started playing with it, and its price went from, like, what, 25 cents to $25 million or something? No, it still has They never same. removed. No. It, no? Still, it still works this way. It yeah. still works this way, and it's just yeah. ridiculous. Okay, people well, just realized, wait a minute. No, dredge happened is what made it. Yeah, good. there are things you can do with it now. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. The card, oh, okay. the card is still really bad. <laughs> well. fair, it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then it enables broken things, so even a bad card can be ridiculous in the right circumstances. It's true. Except Kevin with Souls. What, what's the, uh, or when one with Kevin nothing, that's, still not, bad. that's not doing anything, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, now that you have all those things that trigger on discard. But really, why would you play one with nothing when you could play the Lion's Eye Diamond? <laughs> <laughs> Soul. You could either pay it. one, you could either pay one black mana or get three mana of any color. <laughs> well, maybe you're playing modern, Mike. Did you think of that? Yeah, That's Mike. True. Yeah. No, because you only think of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that was August. <laughs> yeah. In September, oh god, look, listen to this. In extended, it lasted this long. In extended, they banned From March until September. Oh. oh god, they they banned Dream Halls, Earthcraft, Lotus Petal, Mind Over Matter, Yogmoth's Will. Is anybody seeing a problem here? <laughs> what? What are you people thinking? <laughs> uh... To be fair, Yogmoth's Will on turn one with a dark ritual, very bad. <laughs> That's why Dark Ritual's perfectly fine. Oh, but you can't cast Dream Halls with Dark Ritual, so it's okay. I mean, you can. 
It has well, three three generic in its costume cost. Yes, but you can't turn one it with well. Yeah, uh, but you help. can with Earthcraft. Look, Dark Ritual's fine. Just get over it. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, in Vintage, they unbanned Divine Intervention and Charizard because <laughs> nobody's fooling with any of that. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I read that. Vintage, please stop coming to Vintage tournaments. <laughs> um, Let's just let these matches take forever now. Um, or actually, they kind of balance each other out because Divine Intervention, like we said, the problem is not that they make matches take forever. It's the fact that they, you know... Make sure they end a little too quickly and end a draw. So they're actually kind of balancing each other out. They're like, okay, we want to bring back divine intervention. How do we let ourselves do that? Oh, we can bring back Charizard at the same time <laughs> or vice versa. Uh, they also unrestricted <laughs> Ivory Tower, Mirror Universe, and Underworld Dreams. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing then, Mirror Universe was because of the rules change. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. This is- well into 6th edition rules now. Yeah. But then take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, and then they went, you know what? Let's change this up. And they restricted a mess of cards and banned the... the <clears throat> wait, are these the, the same cards? They are all yeah. the same cards. Exact same list, yeah. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get through this real quick. The following cards are restricted or were restricted in Vintage and banned in Legacy. Crop Rotation, Doomsday, Dream Halls, Align Tutor, Frantic Search, Grim Olive, Hercules Recall, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, Mana Evolve, Mine Over Matter, Bl- Mox Diamond, Mo- Miss- I can't even do it! Mox Diamond, Mystical Tutor, Tinker, Vampire, Vampiric Tutor, Voltaic, Key Mox, Bargain, Yagamas, Will, da 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 Looking at this <sighs> list, I only see two cards on it that are no longer restricted in Vintage. Which are those two? Crop Rotation and Doomsday, I think. I think you're right. So most of these were for the best. How many is that? Crop Rotation is legal and vintage. Doomsday is legal and vintage. I'm pretty good at this game. Uh, let me just check. 18 cards. 18. I don't know if you're paying attention oh. at home, but that's two less than 20. Huckles <laughs> Recall. Huckles Recall is also not restricted. Oh, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, those got restricted in Vintage and banned in Legacy. Well, neither is mine ever matter. All right, I'm, all right, I'm done. Um, yeah. And most of these nobody would argue with. No. And nobody's like, yeah, uh, Lotus Petal was fine. Oh, and also uh, the same cards that were unbanned or unrestricted in Vintage are now unbanned in Legacy. So Divine Intervention, Ivory Tower, Mary Universe, Shot Rizad, Underworld Dreams. So yep, totally a thing. So let's move on to 2000 in March and in extended mana vault was banned. And for some reason they banned dark ritual. Well, the card's fine. I don't get it. It's so stupid. All it does is it costs you a card and gives you two extra mana. That's not broken by any means. (laughs) (laughs) That's what black does. You guys, that's black's color identity. (laughs) Oh my God. Wait, which, uh, one, which one's Mana Vault? Mana Vault is the, uh, the cube thing. Yeah, okay. So yeah, anything that costs one and gives you three mana, they're like, you know what? Maybe that's too good. <laughs> hmm. In Masks Block Constructed in June, they oh banned Lin Sippy Defiant Hero because she Zena. was massively, terrifyingly format warp- warping. Yeah. yeah. And Rashad in Port because dicks. We, we, yeah. <laughs> We need to talk, talk, talk for a minute about Lin Civy because there is players, no I want to say modern that players, that's not, but players now would look at that and go, what on earth is wrong with that? You know, yeah, it seems pretty good, but it's not like, why? Is this the, is this the first creature since, um, since Ali from Cairo to be banned or restricted? No, Juggernaut. Ju- um, <laughs> Yeah, Juggernaut, Curde, Serendipifree. Okay, but still, the list of creatures to non-creatures is heavily slanted, like yeah. overwhelmingly slanted. So you might and especially, go. Especially the Juggernaut came off the list very soon afterwards, too. Yeah, because they had a brain that functioned. <laughs> but in Masks Block, Mike, you were playing mm-hmm. then. You know, why don't you tell people about Lin Civy and Lin Civy just keeps making cards just keeps making cards she's impossible to she's nearly impossible to deal with permanently um and you just run your 
opponent over with card advantage. And another problem is that at the time, the legend rules, the legend rule was very different. So the legend rule, it didn't just look at you and your stuff and said, okay, you can only keep one. It looked at both players and said there can only be one on the battlefield, period. And this is a really different part, is that if there were ever two legends with the same name on the field at the same time, the newer one got put into the graveyard. You're right. So whoever stuck Lynn Civy first won. Yeah. Not not just not just won the Lynn Civy, but probably won the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the entire constru- uh, block constructed format was the race to Lynn Civy. Yeah. She was also pretty good in standard. But there were other things to do in standard, clearly, from the freaking banner mm. restricted list. Right. <laughs> yeah. But Whereas in mass block, block, yeah, there wasn't much was, else going on. This no, there was the Rising that. Waters deck was the only other thing you could do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Rashad and Port. Yeah, because that card is fair. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you tap a thing to tap their thing, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you, you tap two things to tap their thing. Oh, well, yeah, you tap two things to tap their thing. It seems totally fair. And to, to be honest, for the longest time, I didn't get it. Well, and I think when you're looking at, at it, you know, a lot of newer players also don't like um, strip mine or wasteland because you're like, you're caught, yes, you're setting them behind, but you're also setting yourself behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the same kind of concept of, you know, you're you're spending some resources to put them further behind, which keeps them from catching up with what you are already doing. And you're probably already too far ahead. And this is making sure that they can't get back into it. Yeah. Or it's another one of those things where you're not going to understand it until you're in the middle of the game and you actually have the boot on your neck. Yeah. So it's a good way to put it, actually. <laughs> ah, so oh, that was June of 2000. Your upkeep, you've got like three fourths. We've only got one plane. Well, guess what's getting tapped? Yeah. Yeah. So in September of 2000, uh, Channel and Mind Twist and Vintage were unbanned but restricted. So now instead of having none in your deck, you get one. Yay. Yeah. And they also restricted Demonic Consultation and Necropotence because duh. Right? Right? It seems duh, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then in Legacy, they also banned Demonic Consultation and Necro. Probably for the best. Yeah. The amount of consultation is definitely one of those cards where I think I've said this on the show before. If the first time you read it, it doesn't seem that bad. And the first time I read it, I thought it was just downright stupid because I misread it. The text on the card says, name a card, remove the top six cards of your library from the game and reveal the next card to all players. If it is the card named, put it into your hand. If not, remove that card from the game and continue revealing the top of your library and removing it until you, the name card appears. So basically, you go ahead and get rid of the top six, and then you keep going until you find the card you want. Combo, piece, boom, whatever you're looking for is going to win you the game. For whatever reason, when I read this the first time, I thought you kept exiling the top six cards. So <laughs> you had to like luck out, and somewhere along the line, the number seven card had to be what you were looking for. And I'm like, this is a good way to kill yourself. I don't get it. So, but that was just an RTFC moment. To be fair, there are a whole lot of words on that card in very <laughs> tiny print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was a, I was a much newer player at the time. So. What is this? A card for ants? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was 2000. Mm-hmm. In 2001, more things happened. <laughs> Extended saw the banning of Necropotence and Demonic Consultation because, you know, they're still good no matter how many cards you have in the freaking format. Mm -hmm. Even without Dark Ritual, which I still say was totally fine. (laughs) Uh, They also banned Replenish. Yup. Why'd they ban Replenish, Chris? Um, Because it was absolutely ridiculous with Opalescence. You would dump a whole bunch of high costing cost enchantments in your graveyard. You'd cast replenish, and then they'd all come back into play with a pandemonium, and your opponent would be very, very dead. Wait, really? Which, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I thought it was getting back a bunch of ridiculous busted ass enchantments and then killing your opponent with them, but they're not by swinging at their face. Well, you, you could know? also do it with fire, fires of Yavimaya or fervor, which would give them haste so that you could just smack them in the face. 
Oh, okay. Well, how about See, that? See, there are, there are numerous ways that this is a bad idea. So, how much and does it cost? Four? Yeah. Four, four, four. Yeah, it's not enough. It's really not. <laughs> uh, they also banned survival of the fittest. Which is no point. That it took a while. It's a good idea. It, it took way longer than I would have thought. They had too much other stuff to ban in the meantime. Well, the thing is, without Recurring Nightmare, it wasn't as bad. But wait, was Recurring Nightmare banned in Extended? Um, no. Uh, Recurring Nightmare, no. I thought it got banned somewhere. Did it just standard. get banned in Standard? Oh, yeah, it got banned in Standard. Yeah, you're right. Huh. They figured it was a little too slow. Maybe this or... is... Wait, were there cards, like creatures printed at some point around here that made it better, maybe? Um, what came out in 2001? I mean, that recurring Nightmare Survival of the Fittest deck that I'm thinking of, all the creatures, it was all like Tempest and Mirage cards. Well, I mean, the th- it's like Birthing Pod, right? It doesn't matter what sets are out, there's something good in it. Yeah. Uh, card set archive. Let me see what came out in 2000. Yeah, and at this point, I mean, Xena was still reaching back like six years, all the way back to Ice Age, so there's a ton of stuff. Yeah. Uh, invasion. So we had Plane Shift in February, Seventh Apocalypse, and Odyssey were all released in 2001. Hmm. So this was- maybe the survival deck was just, I mean, this is the point. They've, they've gotten really good at Banning and unbanning based on metagame and whatnot. Yeah. Maybe the survival deck was just because the the link mm-hmm. to this is an old crystalkeep.com link, which is gone. So we don't have a reference for these last oh, several. Yeah, mind. like the previous year, the March 2000 bannings for Dark Ritual and Mandavolt and Extended, I'm pretty sure that was to kill the Illusions Donate deck. Yes, and Shamanic Consultation was in that too. Mm-hmm. Oh. But- don't forget, March 2001 was when this banning happened, so only Plane Shift had come out. So more than likely, it was something from Invasion or Plane Shift that triggered this banning. More likely Invasion. Or Invasion, sorry. Maybe the Dragons? I don't know. No. Yeah, I don't uh, know. And that's the problem with the this particular uh, site, is that the references are gone. Because they would have said, we're banning these, here's why. But our reference link, like I said, is to Crystal Keep, which has been gone for a very long time. <laughs> I know the guy who used to run that. We may see if he's got the archives. We must know. But <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess it's because the metagame was just not what they wanted. At this and... point, they're still banning decks and not cards, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah. For the most part. Like this this deck is a little – or the, these couple of decks are too rep- uh, repressive or too powerful. And we want to open up the format, so let's ban these and see what happens. Now you see the violence inherent in the system. Help, help, we're being repressed. Please come and see the violence inherent in the system. So that's March. Only extended took a hit. We're good. And then December happened. And oh my God. <laughs> yeah, for so. December 2001 in Vintage, they restricted fact or fiction. And in Legacy, they banned it. Yeah, for so. And uh, why, why did they do that, you guys? Hmm. So EOT FOFIL stands for end of term, fact or fiction, you lose. Because yep. nobody knew how to play against this god. <laughs> it's basically almost like four mana, draw five cards. Almost. Or it's, you know, scry five. Yeah. <laughs> and, there's, and, yeah, there's a reason why every time they've done this in recent years, you're the one who makes the piles and your opponent does the picking. Because any time you have the opponent making the piles and you do the picking, you just get exactly what you want every single time. It doesn't every matter. single time, regardless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, I mean, even they, if you're talking about that one Jace from Return to Ravnica, where it's you're just looking at three cards, yeah, and your opponent, and your opponent separates them into two piles, you get what you want every single time. It doesn't matter. Every single, yeah. It'll take you like a second to make the decision because you know exactly what you want. You're going to get it. Yeah. And it's an instant. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's legal in all of these now, but now is a very different time. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's cute. You're tapping out to cast a four mana spell. Kill you. <laughs> Walked right into that one. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> so that was 2001. And then we made it all the way through 2002 with no changes to any band restricted list. Huh? Seems good. 
Yeah. Now, this is about the time that I started playing with these guys. Because Onslaught came out in 2002, which means I started playing right around that time. I think just before Onslaught came out was when we all started playing together. Yeah, let's see. Torment and... In early 2002, Torment and Judgment came out. Yeah. And then later in 2002, I don't think that was a core set year. So yeah, Onslaught. Yeah, Onslaught came out in October of 2002. Mm-hmm. And I know that it was my first new set when I started playing again. So... I stopped back when, like, Weatherlight, and I never played seriously. It was just goofing around with Scott and Shoop and whoever else. So, yeah. Now we're getting into what I'm going to call the the modern timeline, because this is when I started playing again. So this is the modern Chewy timeline. <laughs> and it's when I start playing, period, so. Right. So... That said, I think, because of how long we've been going already, this is a good place to stop. And we will continue with the history of the Banhammer Part 2 at some point in the near future. What do you guys think? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I took a break at this point anyway, so seems oh. reasonable. See, there you go. So, yeah, this has been – it's really fascinating to look back at Isn't what it? got banned and when and why. And, and just toss around random bits of nostalgia and trivia and – yeah. Yeah. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. So we'll grab Chris uh, again at some point in the near future. Barrel. And uh, we will continue the rest from 2003 to the modern day. In, in, our, in an upcoming episode. So let us know what you guys think. And if you have any other information that we might have missed or gotten wrong about why any of these cards uh, were banned or unbanned or restricted or any of that, then the, by all means, let us know somehow. Uh, for the purposes of posterity, preferably an email or a comment on the website, uh, for the actual information so that we can find it later. If you send me a Facebook message, that's not going to work because <laughs> uh-huh. it'll disappear very soon. So yeah, hell yeah. This is, this was a lot of fun. I'm, I, this was a good idea that I had. I'm proud of me. <laughs> good job. Good yeah. idea. Thanks. Yeah, I'm a helper. So, uh, how about some final thoughts from you guys? Should we, should we start with, uh, Brian cause it's late? Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm doing okay, but that's all right. Um, we broke him. Ah, uh, um, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, things are going okay right now. Things are fairly calm and quiet on home front. And, you know, I feel like I should have something witty to say, but things are, are, are going okay. So, I guess, wow, I'm, I'm just, I'm just terrible at this game. Um, snoochie boochies? <laughs> woochie woochie. Um, I'm just gonna say, life is good. Hope you guys are doing well. Oh, all right. I guess I'll stay. Uh, so I'm considering building a deck for a standard tournament coming up. And there's a couple cards here that I have some of, but not like a full set. So I was researching a little bit because I haven't played standard in a while. Like, how much does this cost? Oh, this actually isn't that bad. How much does this cost? Wow, this is actually pretty good. And I got to Fatal Push. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I know this is a good card. I know it's a very good card. It's an uncommon. So it's probably not as much as it could be. <laughs> Yeah. Why is it, I mean, I know everybody, but nine dollars? What? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe my two will just be good enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, you really want four, but mm-hmm. no, you know, so, but anyway, um, I'm surprised to hear that an uncommon and in print set. Well, it's because I, it's a four of in every format. Yeah. 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 Wait, which one? I, I zoned out. Fatal push. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. So. Are you going to tell us what you're building, Brian? Um, I'm working on a – it's very preliminary, and it will probably change like five times before the tournament. But it's kind of a – it's a uh, revolt, but it's a revolt deck. Uh, but it's not so reliant on the keyword revolt that it doesn't have – it doesn't – I don't want to sacrifice power. Mm-hmm. But I really like Renegade Rallier. I really like Hidden Stockpile, which just seems really, really good. And then, um, other cards to kind of supplement that. Uh, and then other cards that I'm trying to more look at now that standard is filling out with all these sets, 
what are cards from other sets uh, other than Aether Revolt that also care about things dying or being exiled. And uh, like our good friend um, uh, Avison gets a little like, hey, look, something died. Urgh. So, and some things like that. Uh, so ways to get things, uh, to sacrifice things or blank things, and then ways to capitalize on that. And I'm in Abzan colors right now, and I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm, I'm going to be doing a fair amount of fine tuning. So it could end up somewhere completely different than when I start. Most of the time when I'm trying to build a unique deck for an event, where I end up is very, very different from where I start. So we'll see. Nice. Hey, that's it. All right, then. So I guess Mike? Um, I agree with what Chris said earlier. It was really interesting to go down memory lane here talking about some of these things. And for some of them trying to figure out what the heck was going on to either get them banned in the first place or what the heck that was going on that they weren't banned, you know, like a whole year beforehand. Um, but, yeah, Magic the Game has learned a lot about itself <laughs> over the years. <laughs> yeah. Free dog ritual. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's it's been fun to kind of grow up with it. Um sometimes I think it's funny when like people hear that I've been, you know, playing for over twenty years, they think I'm oh wow, you must be really good. I'm like, no I'm not. <laughs> I've just been playing forever. <laughs> Sadly those two things are not necessarily related. Yeah, <laughs> but I have also learned very much about the game <laughs> in the meantime, and it gives an interesting perspective. To be fair, Mike knows why he's not real good. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I don't think ahead and I don't pay attention and this, that, and the other thing. <laughs> Actually, all my problems are related to those two factors. I don't think far enough ahead and I don't pay attention. I was going to say, that's life, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike is one of the smartest people, bar none, that I know. Yep. Without question. Yeah, but sometimes I rely on that. I, I just try to wing it. <laughs> yeah, it's always amazing to me, and you know I love you. It is always amazing to me that you don't do better at some of these events than you do, because I'm like, you're Mike. And then, I don't know, you do really well a lot of times, but there's other times where you're just like, you're having a bit of a hard time. And I'm like, why? You're Mike. <laughs> well, I, I learned just... a, a long time ago, then when Mike answers a question and sounds really uh, sure of himself, he's probably making things up. <laughs> <laughs> not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to fool anyone or tell a lie. It's it's more of like I'm thinking out loud, but it sounds like I'm answering a question with a definitive answer. Yeah, he he thinks out loud very uh, confidently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Uh, so, how about you there? Uh, wait, was that it for you, Mike? By the way, I think so. Yeah. Okay. How about you there, uh, Mister English Canadian? Man. Person. Person. So, uh, kind of the opposite of Brian. Life is fine. Life is good, but everything is in upheaval and oh my God. So next week I'm going halfway across the country to a good friend's wedding. Uh, then when I come back, I have approximately six days to pack up everything in my apartment so that I can move in with my girlfriend. Uh, and then while that can, is all being Can I moved, recommend you start packing before you go to your friend's wedding? I mean, I do have some things in boxes. Okay, I'm proud of you. <laughs> and then uh, while I am moving, I will be in Montreal uh, judging the GP there and also testing for level three. God help me. Oh, wow. And then when I come back from Montreal, I will be going back to the new place, even though I'm still paying rent for this old place until the end of May. Also, my job is all in upheaval and everything's changing. It's not threatened, fortunately, but... There's a whole bunch. It's just chaos in there right now. Nobody knows what anyone's doing, including the managers, especially the managers. So, yeah, everything's happening at once. But Doc Ritual's fine, though. Hmm. Totally. Why would anyone think otherwise? Also, playing, like, video games with children is just so much fun. Like, they're not related to you, not random children on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids. I was going to say, because I, I play Overwatch with random children, and I don't I don't like them. 
some of the some of the words they come up with to describe other people are uh, are, are quite creative. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, that not the word I would have used. Apparently, I'm gay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I know it was news and, to me too. And they can tell just because of how you, uh, how I play League of Legends. How you play League, yeah. Yeah. It's, I, <laughs> something about it says I enjoy the company of men. It's really weird because when I play Overwatch, they can, they, they seem to be able to tell that I am really Jewish and gay. <laughs> Man, these kids on the internet are really sharp. They're telling us things about ourselves we don't even know. <laughs> I can confirm one of those things. <laughs> I'm not going to ask because I would like to be a surprise to myself. Julie, you surprise me all the time. Oh, I appreciate that. Especially in the show. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> Especially when I sneak up behind him. You're a goose. By the way, Brian, just when you go to bed tonight, just don't don't look in your closet. <laughs> I never look in my closet. That's I know. You know that would spoil the surprise. <laughs> I got a mute. <laughs> All right, we made Chris mute. <laughs> awesome. Um. By the way, was was that it for you, Chris? You good? Uh, no, I'm not good, but I'm done. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good Ow. luck on your uh, level three test, sir. I'm sure you'll knock it. If not out of the park, it'll at least be an in the park home run. Yeah, it'll hit the wall. I'm excited. Scared. It'll hit somebody. It'll hit the third baseman straight, you know, in the forehead. This is just getting more and more progressively violent. I'm not sure I like this. Right. <laughs> huh. Anyway, I guess that leaves me. Where, uh, hi, I'm Chewy. Hi, Chewy. <laughs> I've been sober for, uh, <laughs> some number of years. What do you get when you're sober for a button or a pin or a? Pat on the back. Pat on the back. I don't know how AA works these days. I'm sorry. You get a little medallion, I think, with the number of years on it. A medallion? Yeah, it's a little, like, coin-shaped thing. Oh, it's a coin. Yay! Yes. Other people would have called it a coin. Yeah. But because <laughs> but it's Mike, Mike yeah. is a badass, <laughs> it is a medallion. Sick. Um, so, what have I got going on? I, I've been driving a lot here lately. There was a week where I didn't get any calls, and now they won't leave me alone. So, that's cool. I got to go to... Oh, here's a, a small driving store. I got to go to Conway, South Carolina on Monday, which is why we did not record Monday Night Magic on Monday. Mm. They called me at 1 o'clock, and we're like, we need you to go very far away. I was like, okay, fine. And uh I went to Conway, South Carolina, which is almost Myrtle Beach, for those wondering. And on the way back, I hit the horrible storm front that rolled through here. And, uh, there was purple lightning. No purple rain? I mean, there was rain, but there's definitely purple lightning. Okay. And if anyone has ever seen Cabin Boy, that terrible movie from the, uh, 90s, you'll know that purple lightning is never a good sign. If you haven't seen that movie, would you like to buy a monkey? Mm. Anyway, uh. (laughs) I remember my dad saw commercials for that and really wanted to go see it. And mom thought it was just dumb. They went to the theater and saw it anyway, and And they came back and, yeah, like I could see the remorse on (laughs) Dad's face. Yeah, it was it was not good. (laughs) But uh, so during this storm, so the Overwatch event was set to end May first, which, judging from the last two Overwatch events, meant May second sometime. So the plan was when I get back. We're going to overwatch hard to get up the the last of our loot boxes for the event, and it'll be awesome. I get a call from – or a message from Bill at like 8.03 that was like, well, the event ended three minutes ago. And I said, what? And, <laughs> and called him because I had stored up enough currency to buy almost everything from that event that I didn't have yet mm-hmm. and definitely get everything I wanted. And I hadn't spent any of it. And once the event ends, it's all locked. And I was like, what? And so I called him because I was driving. And while I was talking to him, the bottom fell out so hard that Bill goes, what the hell is that sound? I was like, that's the storm that just hit me. He's like, you're going to (laughs) die. Thanks, Bill. And uh, at this point, my GPS lost its mind. It freaked the hell out. And apparently it freaked out at some point when I was supposed to make a turn. Because suddenly I look over at the screen and I'm driving on no road. I'm just driving through a field. 
and it's telling me to get on, on a road. And I'm like, I'm, I'm on a highway. And it's like, what are you doing? And, and mind you, this is like some of the hardest rain I've ever seen in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina. It doesn't get much worse, all right? <laughs> and the GPS finally puts me back on a road and it's like, okay, you need to turn around. You missed a turn. Turn right here. And so I slow down and I go to turn right where it tells me to. And there's no road. There's nothing. And I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> so I keep going because there's no road to turn right on. And it's like, oh, you missed that one. Turn right ahead. And I'm like, okay. And I go a little while. It's like, turn right here. And I look and it's a driveway. It's just a line of houses and it's a driveway. And I'm like, N- no. And I drive along a little more and it goes, oh, you missed that one. Turn right on road ahead. And I get up to road ahead. And again, there's nothing. And I'm like, what in the hell is going on? And there's nowhere to like pull over and look it up uh, on my phone. Cause I am completely a slave to my GPS when I'm on these drives, places I've never been before. I just go where she tells me and I get there and I get back. You know, that's just how it works. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'll call the old man. Maybe he can tell me where the hell I am. He's not answering his phone. He's not answering his cell phone. Mom is at Nana's house taking care of her. The old man was like, his like hip has been bothering. I'm like, oh God, he's dead. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna be eaten by hill people in South Carolina. This is gonna be the worst. <laughs> And eventually, when the rain and the lightning all ease up, purple lightning this whole time, by the way, it, the GPS finally goes, okay, just drive 11 miles and hang a, a right, and I'll get you back to the highway. And it finally realized where I was <laughs> and got me back to the highway. It added half an hour to my trip <laughs> because purple lightning fried my GPS for a little while. Apparently at a point when I was supposed to make a turn and just didn't know it because I was talking to Bill and we were ranting about how Blizzard is stupid. Blizzard, by the way, reinstated the event not long afterwards and didn't tell anybody. So Bill spent all his currency on the stuff he wanted. And then they, uh, at some point, like an hour later, they issued a tweet with a definite end time. Okay, it'll end tomorrow at, you know, 8 p.m. your time. And Bill was like, what? And then the loot boxes that he opened since then, he opened all of the things that he spent his currency on. <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, that was that. was that was that. It's been a long time since I told a stupid driving story on the show. It's been relegated to the odds and ends since I started those. But there you go. Don't drive to South Carolina, folks. <laughs> and if there's purple lightning, you're going to die. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure they've changed their name to North Georgia because they no longer want to be associated with North Carolina. Yeah, well, it's really bad when we're the bad Carolina. That's a running joke yeah. on that magic, uh, dear listeners. We spent so long making fun of South Carolina for being the bad one. And then things happened. <laughs> <laughs> things took a turn, and I don't mean Urza's legacy was released. But anyway, anyway. So, yeah, that's that's a quick driving story. I've been driving every day this week to various places near and far. It's, it's been fun. I'm, uh, I'm streaming again. I'm, I'm a Twitch affiliate now. So that means people can cheer bits at me, which is essentially a way, a tip jar. It's a way to support streamers. If you do the Twitch thing, you understand this. And if you don't, then you don't care. So it's fine, but it's really cool. And I had my first Twitch affiliate stream last night. I played three and a half hours of Hearthstone, uh, with uh, a bunch of decks that I had built and it was a lot of fun. A bunch of people came to hang out and cheered with some bits and that was amazing. So a big thanks to everybody who took part of that, in that, on that, whatever. And yeah, over on YouTube, I've released more Overwatch, more, uh, what's the, the other thing? Injustice. I'm actually about to, as soon as we're done with this episode, I'm going to render an Injustice video. The podcasts are going up on YouTube now for people to listen to. Yeah, yeah, lots of stuff. Lots of fun, wild, weird, wacky stuff. Awesome. Yeah, so you can find us anywhere on the internet that we are with the Mana Pool. So Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Steam. There's a Steam group. I haven't figured out. I haven't taken the time to set up the Discord group yet. Chat server, server, Discord server yet. I'm very sorry. Um, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I always feel like I'm missing something. Oh, the website is themanapool.com. Duh where you can find all the podcasts. Oh, and soon on YouTube, I'm going to be doing the Amonkhet story in Magic Duels, which multiple people have asked me about. Like, hey, what do you think? 
do you want to know what I think? And I'm like, I don't know. No, don't tell me. I don't know yet. I'll get back to you. So I have to do that soon before people start just offering up opinions and whatnot before I have a chance to see it myself. Whoops. Yay. And then there's Patreon if you want to help support what I do with all of this streaming and YouTubing and podcasting and I guess, well, I, I guess I don't really do the uh, performance art as part of the content and it's in my room by myself and it's called work. So never mind. I don't actually do that. The interpretive dancing though, that's coming soon. Lies. Lies. <laughs> Except for you, Chris. I'll, I'll, we'll do a voice chat. It'll be, I mean, a, a, a voice video chat. chat? Video chat. Text that's chat. A text, we'll do yeah. a text chat. Yeah. Well, it futuristic, sounds futuristic technology slightly, here. slightly less hot on <laughs> text. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. Uh, it's patreon.com slash the mana pool, uh, where you can get, uh, podcast, mana pool podcasts and YouTube stuff early. You can get, uh, the odds and ends, all the stuff recorded before and after both Monday Night Magic and the mana pool that's uncensored and unfiltered. And you can get your name on the end screen for all of the videos that go up for every month that you support at that tier. Yeah, you can. He knows. Oh, he does, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. He is. Lands delicious. I'm not one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we're going to go now. So this has been episode 462 of the Mana Pool. A big thanks to Chris, of course. Go check out his articles on Star City Games. They go up on when? Mondays. Yes, they do. On the, the free side. Yes, sir. Because it's not worth paying for. He says, <laughs> in a self-deprecating fashion. That's a real company man right there. <laughs> if he's, like, waiting for us to, you know... No, sir. <laughs> to, Legitimately to, not like, worth paying for. Have you seen who gets charged for? Like, you know, Brad Nelson, Patrick Chapin, Todd Stevens, Todd Anderson, Ari Lax, Sam Black, Chris Lansdale. One of these things just doesn't belong <laughs> Fair enough. Although, to be fair, I haven't asked any of them on any of my shows this week. You've been on both of them. Wait. You're Chris oh, yeah. Lansdale. This whole time I thought I was podcasting with Brian Prilliman. Okay. That wow. makes so much more <laughs> sense than I thought it would. You know Brian Prilliman isn't out yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, on that bombshell, we're going to go now. So, uh... Thanks to Chris. Thanks to my fellow dorks. I hope Dirk is enjoying his boat. Not his <laughs> boat, but he's on a he's on a boat. I'm on a boat. It's his boat now. Is, <laughs> possession is nine tenths of the law, right? <laughs> uh, 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 okay, Brian, don't go a lawyer on you. I'm shutting up. So this has been episode four sixty two of the Mana Pool. Thank you all so very much for listening. Beware the ban hammer and uh, go play some magic. Meow. Yeah. Wrong, wrong show. Yeah.